Hello, my name is Gurpreet Dillon. I'm a professor of information security at Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond, Virginia. The topic of our discussion today is aspects of organizational competence and cybersecurity policy implementations. As is very obvious, competence is absolutely critical if any cybersecurity policy implementation has to take shape. Um, different people define competence in different ways, but it's really an ability, it's a skill set that people might have in an organization and how they bring to bear in order to realize a given task. So today we will be talking about how competencies are defined, how competencies can be articulated, and how competencies can be realized in an organizational setting such that cybersecurity policy implementation uh, can take place. When we discuss this whole notion of organization competence, there are two aspects that need to be thought about. First is what's going on in your mind and second is what's happening in the organization or in the world in terms of organization performance. When we are discussing things that are going on in your mind, there are at least three aspects that need some consideration. The first one of that is technical security skills. It goes without saying that if good security has to be implemented in any organization, high quality security skills are absolutely necessary. So whatever those skills might be will obviously change as time goes by. May it be in encryption, it might be in crypto, it might be in network security administration, database security, or how do you ensure that Java programs are secure, what are the aspects of Java programming that are secure. These are very, very specialized topic areas and that absolutely if you are a Java programmer, security becomes a very important aspect for you. If you're a .NET programmer, security is very, very important for you as well. And every single language, every single network, every single database has its own nuances as to how security should be built. So having good technical skills is obviously very, very important uh, for any security policy to be realized the way it has always intended to be realized. But coupled with the technical security aspects is another aspect, and that is about organizational security skills. Is the organization ready? I mean, we always talk about value systems in organizations, but is the organization, is the company ready to uh, incorporate all the skills, technical skills that, that might exist. Now, this is a very tricky situation to deal with because in any enterprise, you will need business processes to be in place and those business processes um, are generally populated with the right kind of people who have the right kind of skill. So there's a need syncretic combination between the skills and the processes that is going on. It is an, it is an important hence to understand uh, what kind of skills are going to be put in what kind of a business process and that is a competence in itself. How do you kind of configure uh, the skills of individuals with those of uh, the business processes. And then finally, last but not the least, is the cultural strategic security aspects. Now whenever we are talking about cybersecurity, cybersecurity does not uh, come into being in a vacuum. It is um, it is culturally driven, it is set within the organization, it is, it is driven by the normative structures that might exist. An ability to understand the culture and ensure that everything that we do is in line with whatever the organization is aspiring for or is the dominant culture is a competence in itself. So the technical, the formal and the, and the cultural aspects come together to define what we call the mastery of what to do um, with the things. So this is the know-how of security. The know-how aspect of security is, is again, um, it does not come into being uh, all of a sudden. It's a combination of the technical organizational security things and the cultural aspects, which defines the know-how that a group of people, an individual uh, might have with respect to security administration. The know-how of security then gets translated into know that of security. Now this is a very important point again. When we talk about the know that, this is where the real organization, this is where the rubber touches 
the road and, and we know how certain things are going to work and other things may not work. Now, the certain things are absolutely fine in theory, but when you go out and implement them in practice, they may not just be fine. So that is an aspect of know that, that needs to be understand that only comes through experience, really. You know, if you don't have the right kind of an experience, you're obviously not going to have the know that. So the know that obviously is uh, linking back into the know-how and there is this whole cyclical process of learning from the practice and then informing the theory as to how it should be done, how improvements can be brought about. It is important to understand the differentiation between what's going on in the mind, uh, the competence of the mind and the competence of the organization of the world where the performance is taking place. And it's the know-how that is linking your technical requirements, the formal requirements and the cultural requirements with the know that. Competence comes in different shapes and forms. Again, certain organizations are obviously more competent than others, but we can really plot the competence uh, along intuition and the ability to analyze a given situation. Now, if you were to consider this particular two by two, where we link the ability to analyze the situation uh, along with the intuition. Intuition is what is generally coming from prior experiences of individuals. So when we look at the intuition and the ability to analyze uh, any given situation, if your ability is good and your intuition is good, then you are generating a situation which I call conscious competence. Conscious competence is where you have high know-how and high know-that, which means you have the ability to understand uh, what is required and you also have good understanding of how it should be implemented um, and what the experiences are going to be in the field and that is a that that is an, a situation which is ideal in a sense for most organizations but you are also going to have situations where your ability to analyze the situation is bad and but your intuition is good which means that really you have a lot of experience but you do not have innate competence to undertake a lot of a um, uh, lot of a uh, lot of things in terms of security this is a situation where you will have reactive competence when i say reactive competence this is you have low know how but high know that which means that you are certainly a practitioner you know what it is but you end up doing a lot of firefighting in terms of uh, dealing with security incidents. So this is again, I mean, you might be secure as a consequence of all the effort that you put in, but may not be the best situation to be in because obviously you need to be thinking about what you're going to be doing. And hence this loop needs to be completed between know how and know that. But in a reactive competence situation, you do not do so, you're essentially firefighting. The third situation is where your ability to analyze the situation is bad, but your intuition is bad as well. Now, this is obviously a disaster situation. You have low know-how and you have low know-that, and it is nothing but bad competence, ad hoc competence. I'm, I'm being generous in the use of the word ad hoc rather than just simply saying poor competence. This is a situation to avoid if you have people or groups of people involved who do not have any experience or do not have any know-how how to do this, this is probably going to be a very disastrous situation for any enterprise. The fourth category and the final category is when your ability to analyze the situation is good but your intuition is bad, which really means that you do not have a lot of past experience in dealing with the circumstances. So it is obviously you're not coming in, you're a rookie, you don't know how to deal with a given circum circumstance as far as cybersecurity is concerned, but you do have high know-how. This is not all that bad a situation. This is what I call unconscious competence. This is a situation where your know-how is high, but your know-that is bad. So suddenly you're going to stumble across all sorts of problems in this if you have groups of people or individuals in this category. But because of high know-how, they're still going to survive. They're going to be good. So competence can be divided into different areas. And I think it's very, very important for any enterprise to figure out where they fit in in this or a group to figure out where they fit in and then work towards 
good competence, which is good know-how and good know-that. That combination is absolutely essential if good security is to be main, maintained. Competence development and this implementation is cyclical in process. Now, it is very interesting to see this particular exhibit that I have where we are talking about uh, don't know and know. Uh, essentially, we're going in a circular way and say, I don't know anything, I don't know that, you don't know, which leads to I don't know, which knows, which again leads to know that, you don't know, and then you know, which again leads to know that, you know, and then don't know what you know. So it's, it's a circular argument in a sense, but it is important to understand this because it has some very important implications when you are talking about the top right hand corner here where you don't know and you're moving into a situation of don't know that is what we talk about as concrete experiences on the other extreme is again where you don't know but you're in the no no quadrant you talk about abstract conceptualizations and on the bottom right hand corner is active experimentations this is don't know and no uh, quadrant on the other side, in the no, don't know quadrants is reflective observation. So if you look into the crosses in between, there is a continuum which we call the perception continuum, which means essentially your perception between concrete experiences and abstract experiences span that particular spectrum and it changes from being uh, concrete to abstract. When you have abstract, your know-how is obviously very, very high, but your know that may not be uh, that good. But as time goes by, it becomes concrete experiences. So concrete experiences are really hands-on, hard, front-end experiences of managing security. Abstract are when we take into uh, various aspects of conceptualization. Then you have the process continuum, which means really am I going to do engage in active experimentation all the time or am I going to be more reflective now reflective obviously is the thinking loop and you think about those things and then you engage in active experimentation but it's important to understand however that this categorization is important to know how you are going to be building competence in an institution particularly with respect to cybersecurity and how you're also going to be sustaining it over a period of time. Hence, it's important to understand various facets of competence in this light.